The following podcast is intended for informational and educational purposes only. Please speak to health professionals before making any medical decisions. Gene therapy research can feel like a complex topic and one that yields many questions. Why are scientists researching gene therapies? How are they designed to work? What are the unknowns? Let us answer some of your questions here, and it's in the Genes podcast. We're excited to feature experts in the field, from research scientists and healthcare providers to an actual gene therapy trial participant. It's in the Genes is produced by Bloodstream Media and exclusively sponsored by Biomarin Pharmaceutical. We're here to turn complexity into clarity. Be sure to subscribe to It's in the Genes from bloodstreammedia.com. If you're hungry for even more on gene therapy research, visit hemedifferently.com and sign up to stay in the know on the latest in gene therapy research. Welcome to the final installment of this season of It's in the Genes, a gene therapy podcast. We've navigated through the history of gene therapy research and what it was like on the forefront of discovery. We've learned about the challenges and setbacks to the research and what ethical questions are in debate throughout the field. We had an opportunity to hear about the protocols and procedures of clinical trials from a gene therapy research nurse and heard from a patient himself about what the experience of a trial has been like. So where do we go from here? What motivates the science community towards continuing the research into gene therapies? The first moment a scientist learns about the potential, the possibility of something revolutionary is special. Dr. Glenn Pierce shares his moment. My first impressions of gene therapy came along in 1984 when the factor VIII gene was cloned. And that captured my imagination and I began to follow the field of gene therapy. The challenge of getting the results, the positive results in the humans was just elusive. And there were many, many reasons for that, including just the technology itself wasn't quite ready for clinical use. With all of the excitement coupled with all of the challenges, the personal connection to the possibility of investigational gene therapy and what motivates scientists to stay involved must be explored. Join us for a roundtable discussion with researchers Dr. Jennifer Adair, Dr. Glenn Pierce, and Dr. Friedman. We'll also hear from Dr. Sven Killy, who works closely with the American Society of Gene and Cell Therapy. And of course, we must have our research nurse, Colleen Dancero, in the mix. Join us as we discuss what it means to be involved in gene therapy research today and looking towards the future. As we look towards the future of gene therapy research, what motivates you all to continue your work? Dr. Adair. I think mm -hmm. gene therapy is going to be a new category of therapies that can expand the potential to treat human disease incredibly. Is it, you know, the be all end all? No, I think it's gonna always have to be in, com you know, in combination with pharmaceutical development and other treatment paradigms that come into play, preventative medicine, lots of different areas. But as a category, it does add a lot of new avenues uh, for us to explore. The second part of it for me is you know, when I'm doing something in the lab, you know, like with our, our nanoparticle work or with our automated device work, the first time we get the data that says that, that we've proved that concept, there's this quick second where you're like, man, I'm the only one in the world who knows that. <laughs> but it's like learning something that we didn't know before really also motivates me a ton. What drove me uh, was, well, I, I and many others like me are torn in two directions. One is our urge to uh, treat, that is to be physicians, to be doctors. That's why I went to medical school and that's what my original interests were. But they were always tempered by wanting to understand the disease. The, the fields are, are growing and coalescing to the point where 
where more and more diseases are having uh, at least approaches developed to treat them more effectively than, than uh, is possible at the moment. Thank you, Dr. Friedman. What about you, Dr. Kelly? What motivates you? I get to work with an incredible number of really smart, driven people who are out there doing everything they can to do the best for the patient, to develop the best therapies for the patient. But you know, developing these kinds of therapies is not an individual sport uh, and requires uh, a large team of experts at the top of their field working together for the common good. As we explored the history of the genesis of gene therapy research, we were able to grasp that at times, the field stalled and challenges proved to be difficult to overcome. And yet, in the past decade, gene therapy research has expanded to investigate treatment approaches for many living with rare and chronic diseases. Dr. Glenn Pierce on the reasoning behind such an advancement in the research. The field is taking off more in the 2000s because we started to see some positive clinical results. We started to see some positive results in hemophilia. And with clinical progress in hemophilia as well as in other diseases, we began seeing what the next type of hurdle was. What do we need to overcome in order to increase our chances for seeing something positive uh, in the clinic? We had a lot of failed trials in the first part of the 2000s, uh, the first decade of the 2000s, but we learned a lot from these trials and eventually the trials started to be positive. Colleen Dancero, Director of Clinical Research Nursing at the Boston Children's Gene Therapy Center on her thoughts of the evolving field of gene therapy research. 10 years ago and I started as a research nurse, quite honestly, working with Dr. David Williams here at Boston Children's and several other investigators. And we had our, we opened our first gene therapy trial for X-linked SCID, for severe combined immune deficiency or bubble boy disease. But it was the first gene therapy trial we did at Boston Children's. And one of the early ones, one of the first ones in the United States as well. And very quickly from after that, uh, in rapid succession within the last 10 years, We've gone from one trial uh, in our program, which wasn't even a program then, it was actually uh, just a research study being run out of the Department of Hematology and Oncology, and we now are a gene therapy program, and we have over 17 trials for roughly nine or 10 different indications. And then how fast this gene therapy or this field is evolving is the fact that within this 10 years, in the last year, two years, we have already moved on to gene editing. I have the experience of history on my side, so I work as a nurse taking care of a lot of these patients and these diseases. Quite frankly, they would have died by now. And I know that, and I, because I've seen them die and I've cared for them. Gene therapy is going to become another modality in the treatment of human disease. We have small molecules, we have proteins based upon recombinant DNA technology. Some of those proteins include monoclonal antibodies, which have revolutionized the field of cancer therapy as well as autoimmune diseases. And now uh, nucleic acid therapies are coming along. And that includes gene therapy, where the actual gene is delivered, but it also includes therapies that may deliver RNA species, the type of nucleic acid uh, that can either promote or interfere with the disease process. And so the field is really expanding at this point, and it's on its way to providing yet another modality. So where do we go from here? What does the future look like for gene therapy research and the scientists, researchers, and professionals dedicated to developing this science? We've seen this revolution happen with a few dedicated researchers not willing to give up and, and working and just working to really understand the power of, of gene therapy and the power of cells uh, to come back again uh, and for us to, to reapproach being able to, to modify genes and things like that. And I think it will continue to, particularly with 
some of the new therapies coming out, including the ability to silence genes, the ability to, to change the way genes are expressed, to target specific topics and uh, different groups of, of cells uh, and organs within the body, and even to be able to edit genes. So I think this is just going to continue growing from there. What I would have never expected, and I don't think anybody would have, and I don't think you could have predicted, is how fast this thing, gene therapy took off like a rocket. And if you had told me 10 years ago that we would have had this huge program and I would have been building all these pieces to it and this whole infrastructure and talking to somebody like, you know, talking to you or speaking at international conference, you, I never would have guessed it in a thousand years. Never thought about it at all. Thought I was going to just take care of research patients and enroll them on trials. And that was kind of what I knew how to do. Just as I said, you know, I'm entirely motivated by patients who, in an altruistic way, want to move the technology and the science forward to help patients in the future. To me, that results in an obligation on my part as a researcher to understand when things don't act the way that we thought they would, why that happened, so that we can learn how to do it better in the future. I think that is something that has always taken my breath away in my experience in the field particularly within the rare disease space, where we often have contact with specific patients and being able to speak to those patients and their family and the, the organizations that, patient organizations that support them is so professionally, is so rewarding um, because you just see the good that you've done, all those hours, all that, that sweating, trying to figure things out, the, the fighting, the kicking, the screaming, uh, to be able to get that product through and to make it available to them is, is so worthwhile just being with them and seeing them. So that for me is, is, is really important. I think you know we are right at the beginning of this revolution and there is there is so much ahead of us. I get such uh, like from the bottom of my heart boost seeing people who sometimes have pretty dire health outcomes that are bringing them to that table where the trial is being presented to them and their interest in moving science forward from the altruistic standpoint of helping other people in the future that could get the same diagnosis to me that's there's nothing more motivating than that that was Dr. Jennifer Adair, and Dr. Adair brings up a great point. Patients on current investigational clinical trials for gene therapy are assisting an entire generation. Our patient, Jimmy, agrees. I'm still in awe of it till this day, even though I'm so closely associated with it. You know, every day when I'm with my team and I see the crazy things they're doing, I'm I'm almost like I want someone to pinch me and wake me up that I, I can't believe I'm involved in this. My message to patients who are considering entering a gene therapy trial uh, is to get the facts. Understand uh, the four variables that I've mentioned, variability, durability, reliability, and safety. Understand it for each product that is in the clinic. Ask as many questions as you need to. Uh, confer with as many experts, including your healthcare professionals, as you need to, uh, before making that decision and make an informed decision. Is this something that's right for me or not? Thank you for joining us on this season of It's In The Genes, a Gene Therapy podcast. We loved having you along the journey as we explore the mystery of such complicated and innovative science. Make sure to subscribe to It's In The Genes for further education and awareness on gene therapy research. Thank you, and we'll see you next time. It's in the Genes, a Gene Therapy podcast is written and directed by Amy Board, produced and edited by Greg Holdsman, artwork by Christina Newhard, post-production support from Josh Bragg, Rob Bradford, and Avra Friedman. It's in the Genes, a Gene Therapy podcast is produced by Bloodstream Media and presented by BioMarin. Visit hemedifferently.com for more educational information on gene therapy research. 
Subscribe, rate, and share. It's in the Genes of Gene Therapy podcast. Referrals from you are the best way we can reach new people. Thanks for listening. My name is Amy Board, and we'll be back next season with It's in the Genes, a Gene Therapy podcast.